in this video course we will solve the exam of june 2019 we will cover all questions with the exception of question two which is a theory question and the theory of course is covered by the overall video course so here's the first question find the local extrema and the saddle points of the following function as usual try to do this by yourself and push the pause button so here's the solution of course as usual we have to look for the critical points and the critical points are the ones that are well making sure that this gradient of f is equal to zero in this gradient we have the partial derivative with respect to x and the partial derivative with respect to y and if you take these partial derivatives and set them to zero you have two equations in two unknowns the second equation is only an equation in x so you can derive x and if you inject that in the first equation you obtain y so we have one critical point which is 0 3 so to see if it is an extrema so a minimum or a maximum or a saddle point we have to look at the hessian right and the hessian involves well the second partial derivative with respect to x the second partial derivative with respect to y and here the mixed second derivative and if you compute these this is what you obtain now we have to evaluate the hessian at the critical point right and this is what we obtain and to see if this matrix here is positive definite or negative definite right what we do we use the upper determinants the first upper determinant is simply three and if you compute the determinant we have minus one so here we have something positive here something negative so the hessian is neither positive definite or negative definite it is in fact indefinite and this means that this point over here is a saddle point so here's this second theoretical question so describe the main steps of the line search descent algorithm and illustrate using a drawing what are two typical descent directions and what can be said in terms of convergence speed so of course this is covered by the overall course so it will not be covered in this video the third question is a linear programming problem using the two-phase simplex method for this type of exercise clearly state the standard form of the problem and then clearly indicate the two stages stage one and stage two and for stage one clearly state the artificial problem as usual try to do this exercise by yourself and push the pause button so let us start by writing the standard form well because we have a minus 4 over here we multiply the equation by minus 1 right and therefore the smaller or equal becomes a larger than equal we want the b's here that are on the right hand side to be positive or zero right so we have a maximization problem we can turn it into a minimization problem we simply take the objective function and multiply by minus one here we have two inequations with smaller or equal so we add here a slack variable x4 and here a slack variable x5 whereas in the third equation we have an inequation with larger or equal so we should use a surplus variable x6 right and of course all variables are positive or zero so this is our standard form if you look at this standard form you will see that it's difficult to find a basic feasible solution to start from you can find pivot variables x4 and x5 they are pivot variables because they only appear once in an equation and they have a positive coefficient in front right but for the third equation it is not possible to find a 
will pivot variable. So what we'll do is in stage one, solve an artificial problem. And the goal of this artificial problem is to find a basic feasible solution to start from for the, well, the main problem that we are trying to solve. So what we'll do, because we have here basic variables in the first and second equation is to use an artificial variable x7 in the third equation, right? So it is not necessary to add artificial variables in the first two equations. If you do this, this will work also, but your artificial problem will be much more complicated. So only use as many artificial variables as necessary. So we have added this artificial variable. If this one here has an initial basic feasible solution, this means that, well, this artificial problem in which we minimize x7 will have a solution in which the cost will be zero, which means that the artificial variable x7 is zero. So we'll start by solving this stage one artificial problem. Well, let us start with stage one. So this is solving this artificial problem. The artificial problem has been written in the form of a tableau. We have basic variables x4, x5, and x7. We have zeros here below the pivot. We have zeros above and below the pivot that is over here. And here we have a problem because we do not have a zero below the pivot, right? So this is not a tableau in canonical form. So we cannot start to select which variable is going to enter the base and which variable is going to leave the base. And this is because we have to do an elementary operation here in order to make sure that this becomes a zero so the multiplier will simply be one over here so this is the first operation that we should do well if you perform this row operation over here this is what you obtain so you have the same tableau but the last line here is replaced by this one and these ones correspond to the r coefficients right and we see that there are two here that are negative, so we have not yet arrived at the optimum, right? So what we'll do, since there are two r's that are corresponding to minus one, so we'll take the variable that is most to the left, so x1. Then we have two, so we know now that x1 is going to enter the base, and we have to decide which variable is going to leave the base and therefore we construct this column over here which is really taking the coefficients that you have over here and divide them by the coefficients over here this has to do with this well computation of the epsilon of step two so if you compute the ratios we have 10 over 3 10 thirds 15 over 2 15 uh, over 2 so 7 and a half 4 over 1 4 the smallest one is this one the smallest one that is positive but there are all three positive so simply the smallest one is this one so the pivot will be this element and this means that well this was the old pivot of line one that x4 is going to leave the base so now we have to do the elementary operations to create zeros below the pivot right at this place, this place, and this place. So elementary operations, each time you have to do an elementary operation where you take the element to eliminate, divide by the pivot. So you have multiplies two thirds, one third, and minus one thirds. Well, if you perform these row operations, and you should also multiply the first line by the inverse of the pivot, so I forgot to mention this, you should multiply by one third this line. This is what you obtain. Here you see that the R coefficients, 
uh, the reduced cost over here is still negative we have not reached the optimum yet so this means that x2 should join the base and we should find a variable that should leave the base and therefore we need this column and in this column you have these coefficients divided by these coefficients again this is to compute the epsilon of stage 2 if necessary you can have a look at the video course so 10 thirds divided by 2 thirds that's a 5 25 thirds divided by 5 thirds that's a 5 and 2 thirds divided by a third that's a 2 so the smallest positive coefficient in this column is 2 so we have a new pivot we know that x2 is going to join the base and well here is the previous pivot so we know now that x7 is going to leave the base which is a good thing because this is going to lead to the end of stage one x7 is becoming non-basic and therefore it will be set to zero and this is something that we expect of course now to create zeros above the pivot and below the pivot we have again to do elementary operations right with the multipliers that are given over here again it's the element to eliminate divided by the pivot and if you do the row operations here and again uh, forgot to mention that this pivot should become a one so we should multiply by the multiplier three over here so that we have a pivot of one over here well if you do this you obtain this tableau and as you can see here well the basic variables are x1 x2 and x5 x7 is non-basic right it has to be set to zero and we have here well a line that corresponds to the cost of our artificial problem and this is signaling the end of stage one we can read the initial basic feasible solution to our standard form x1 is 2 x2 is 2 and x5 is 5 all the other variables are non-basic and can be set to zero of course what you should always do is take the solutions here and inject them in both the constraints that you see over here and they should meet the constraints so x1 is 2 so we'll have a 6 here a 4 over here so that's 10 this one is 0 this one is 0 so this is okay right we can continue so we'll have a 4 here a 6 here so that's 10 0 still 10 plus 5 15 so this one is met as well and then we have 2 plus 2 that's 4 minus 0 still 4 minus 0 still 4 so we see that we indeed have an initial feasible basic solution for our standard problem so in order to continue right now we'll take out this column over here because it corresponds to the artificial variable we'll remove this cost over here right and what we'll do is take the cost of our standard problem right so minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 0 0 0 0 and this will be the start of our second stage which is really meant to solve the original problem what you see over here is the initial tableau of stage two remember that we have crossed out the column corresponding to seven we have introduced the cost associated to the standard form remember that the basic variables and the pivot variables were x1 x2 and x5 before starting you should always make sure that you're in the canonical form which means that you have well zeros above and below the pivots this is okay for x5 but you can see here that you have a problem because you have a minus three over here and a minus two so before 
continuing, we should make sure that we bring this tableau in its canonical form. And we can do this by the following two row operations. Once you perform the row operation that you see over here, you obtain a new tableau in which this line here that is crossed out in red is replaced by this line over here. And in this line, you have the reduced costs. So the smallest R is this one. And this means that X3 is going to join the base. We compute this column, which is really these elements divided by these elements. This is really, again, this computation of epsilon in the second step of the simplex procedure. We see that the smallest non-negative element is this one. And this means that nine here is the pivot. And it also means that, well, X5 is going to leave the base. So we have to create zeros above and below the pivot. This is why we have these elementary operations here with these multipliers. And we have to multiply this line here by the inverse of the pivot. If you perform these elementary operations, this is the tableau that you obtain. And as you can see here now, the reduced costs are all positive. This means that we have found the final solution of the original problem. We can read it from the tableau. X1 is one third, X3 is five over nine, and X2 is 38 over nine, right? All the other variables are non-basic variables and they are set to zero. Notice that X4 and X5 are well, slack variables, they are zero. So this means that if you plug this solution in here, you'll have these equations met with equality. And this will also be the case for the third equation since the surplus variable is zero. Of course, as usual, you should check that this solution indeed meets the criteria, right? You can see here that the cost of the minimization problem of the standard form, well, you have to take this one and take the opposite. But the cost of the original problem, of course, this one over here, you have to take this one. So it's 140 over 9. And this concludes this third question. So here's the fourth question. Use Lagrange's multiplier method to find the minimum and maximum distances from the origin to the curve that is given over here. And we will not solve this exercise because you can find the solution in the video eight. It's actually the fifth whiteboard exercise that has been proposed in this video.